Hello, David. Hi, how's it going? Doing great. And how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm excited to talk to you. <laughs> likewise, likewise. I've heard a lot about you and uh, the work cool. that you're doing. Um, cool. So I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy evening and speaking with me today. Yeah, I was fine. I think there's a football game playing, but we delayed it. Or it's rain delayed, so it's fine. Who's um, happy to talk. Who's your team? So I, oh, here in Seattle, um, the Seattle Seahawks are my team, but it's NFL football is fun, so um, I just like to watch whatever game I can catch. You know, I'm also from Seattle. I went to oh. the University of Washington. Oh, you did? Nice. Great school. I've got that special affinity to that uh, Seahawks team. What's cool. our outlook? Are we doing pretty well? I'm sorry? Are we doing pretty well as a yeah, team? Yeah, we're 1-0. 1-0 oh. oh right now, the Seahawks. Huskies lost last week, so that's that's kind of unfortunate. But this, you you take what you get, man. <laughs> we we've got a great sports culture at uh, in Seattle, don't we? Oh yeah, definitely. Especially after the Super Bowl. So, <laughs> so David, um, I want to take you through, I guess, the purpose of this call and sure. our fellow colleague Dan Rue. Um, he connected us together. And for the purpose of it is really hearing from a top interview expert like yourself, mm -hmm. uh, working from Amazon, mm -hmm. want to learn how the world's best candidates prepare for these interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, since you're in the front line delivering these interviews and these questions and you have some sure. good data. And I want us to share this to um, are soon to be clients that are seeking these positions, um, not only in Korea, but abroad. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that what we cover today can be helpful for them in preparation for their job interviews in the future. So sounds good. Yeah, I'm happy to well, help however I can. Thank you so much. Um, so let's first, first and foremost, can you tell us about yourself? Sure. So my name is David Yang. Um, I'm a technical recruiter here at Amazon. Um, I've been here for almost like a little over five years now, um, so stuck stuck at the company. Um, what I primarily do is I hire for se like senior level software engineers and technical talent. But at the same time, a lot of what we cover here at Amazon, and like um, especially in the interview process, there's a lot of overlap in terms of like the behavioral questions we ask, the, the, what we call leadership principles we look for. So I would say like. Yes, I, I, I do come from more of like a technical background. I mean, Amazon is a technical company. And like a lot of like the principles that we lean on are kind of just transcendent upon like whatever role you're interviewing for. So that's just kind of my background and what I do. Um, a lot of my time is not only spent recruiting candidates, but also like preparing them for interviews. And then um, on the back end, like how, how can we get the interview set up so that candidates most like most well benefits, <laughs> for lack of a better word. And, and you just got back from Korea, is that correct? So I was in Korea earlier this year, and we were doing like a little recruiting event there as well, hiring for software engineers. Um, and our team does like do hiring events in like international locations every now and then. So um, yeah, I just had a chance to go and I said, you know what, I'm Korean. I'd love to uh, kind of <laughs> get in touch with my motherland. And um, it was a great opportunity. Awesome. What was your, I would say, first taste of it? I mean, what was your perspective on the job market and specifically mm -hmm. the type of candidates that you're, you're, you're seeing? Could you give us any so, insight? Uh, so, like, again, like, I was hiring for software engineers. Um, and, like, I think oftentimes, like, I try to, like, like interact with the candidates in English first and foremost, and then, mm -hmm. and then only reveal that I'm Korean at the end of the call, just to kind of like let them be at peace and like feel good that, hey, like they have an advocate who is like the same ethnicity. But at the same time, um, I would say like a lot of Koreans, especially when the software engineers are very smart, um, there, there was kind of a distinction between like the people who I could tell could understand English. And like, even if it wasn't like, like even if it was clearly like a like English as a second language person, I could still I could still tell when they understood what they were saying and being asked, versus people who were kind of struggling in a sense um, to understand or like kind of couldn't like 
wrap their heads around like the words that are being asked or whatnot. So um, I think that was just kind of one of the distinctions that I could tell from inter interacting with Korean candidates um, for that recruiting event. What was that? In Sorry? In terms of um, the candidates are be able to understand you and the numbers that weren't able to understand. What was that number roughly? Um, I don't, I don't really know what number, like maybe, gosh, maybe like 30%. I don't know if that's like a number that helps, but 30% of people who, who kind of struggled in terms of like, like understanding, um, like, but I mean, that's not very like specific and like that isn't like, <laughs> that's just kind of off the top of my ballpark head or, but yeah. I was saying the majority uh, that you spoke to could understand you and. Uh -huh. Surprisingly, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, there's also kind of like, there were a few candidates who weren't from Korea um, which was also a pleasant surprise, but um, I would say like most people, they could either communicate f like fluently, um, maybe because they like lived in like an English speaking country for some time, or because like maybe they they have like practice, or um, maybe they have relatives that like they grew, maybe they grew up in the U.S. or something, mm -hmm. and then they Korea or something. So God. Um, I could tell some people who like had more exposure to English and then like those individuals who maybe like had lived in Korea for like their entire lives and then they learned English. Some people were very good surprisingly but oftentimes I could just tell. Yeah. From that trip were you able to I guess recruit and actually onboard some of these candidates or? Are oh you yeah like a good chunk of them. I, I can't give too many like numbers or details but um, especially with like 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 visa situations and whatnot. Like a lot of times, like Korean candidates may go to like Canada or they may go to like um, the UK, um, just because like US visas are hard to get. But um, those countries are usually English speaking as well. Gotcha. Okay, it was just good to know. Thank you for sharing that. Um, now, thank you. And what is I guess what's it like? Uh, I've always been curious because I've never worked for. I've always had my running my own business, so I've never really had a chance to uh, work for a company like Amazon. What's it like? Um, it's really cool, to be honest. Like, um, especially at Amazon, like the culture, they they really empower people. There's a lot of autonomy in the sense that, hey, like if you see a problem or there there's like a roadblock, um, there isn't too many, like if at all, like any like I guess barriers for someone like say me to go and say, hey, you know what? I see this is a problem. Here's a solution that I've been working on or coming up with. Like, how like, how, how can I go about implementing this? And mm -hmm. like a lot of times managers are like, hey, like, do you need anything from me? Or like, um, do it. Or like maybe if someone's working on it, like something similar, like they connect us and like let us know, hey, like go and work, like go and seek this person out or like try like pick their brain or that's like the other side of it too. Like there's a lot of autonomy, but there's also a lot of really smart people you work with at Amazon. Um, so I think that's like the other kind of benefit to working here. Um, a lot of smart people um, and like just kind of, kind of growing in a sense that because you're sur so, surrounded by so many people and like, so many, like you have so much autonomy, um, like you have to, kind of, you like not to say have to, but you get to almost like, take that initiative and you want to, you're, you're a lot more um, driven in a sense, I would say. Yeah. You're saying it rubs off on you. And oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. definitely. <laughs> you feel that um, that culture that is set uh, mm -hmm. happens in other regions, for example, South Korea. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I think, um, especially being a global company, we always have to be like respect, uh, respectful to like just kind of like different regions and how maybe like certain cultures values or like even like the, even small things like holidays like we always kind of like we we're very mindful of that but at the same time like at amazon like what we have here at our company is like what we call our leadership principles um i mean anyone can go on google and look up amazon leadership principles and they'll list like 14 different ones mm -hmm. um, those are really what like drive our company and like the employees and, the, and like culture so if you like regardless of whether you work in like um i don't know like australia or the us or korea like um 
like those are those leadership principles are I would say what kind of drive us um, with kind of like that mindset that hey we're mindful of the local community there as well. So it sets that stage. Yeah, definitely. Got it. Um, then let me take you through this one. Um, I know a lot of the people that are watching, uh, they're also prepping to, you know, work for a big company like Amazon. And sure, uh, I'm speaking with these guys almost on a daily basis. And they're cool. always, asking, you know, how important are these interview skills to land uh -huh. their dream job at a global company uh -huh. like Amazon, you know, Microsoft and Nike, blah, blah, blah. But uh -huh. Amazon, in, in your eyes, how important are interview skills? So, I mean, interviewing is definitely a skill. Like, and like I, I'm, I'm glad you say those words together. Like, interviewing is definitely a skill. Um, a lot, like, like, again, I don't have specific numbers for you, but like very often we see candidates who have interviewed in the past who may not have gotten like an offer or may not have gotten like, like technically we can't give feedback at Amazon, but at the same time, like, um, yeah, they, so they might have gotten through the interview process once, maybe twice, maybe multiple times, and they hadn't gotten an offer. But like every time they interview, I always kind of encourage them and say, hey, like, it's, if nothing else, it's practice. Um, those like interviewing is a skill, being able to like answer questions like off top, off top of your head, being able to like communicate clearly and effectively. Um, those are all like skills that you definitely need to like kind of acquire and like just either like interviewing or practicing, that's definitely gonna help. Yeah. 100%. I mean, I just got off a call with one guy. He's um, a general manager and mm -hmm. in a country manager position for a global company. And he said his exact words were, um, I bombed it, you know? <laughs> oh man, that sucks. So, so then I said, hey, what made you think that you bombed it? And he said, uh -huh. well, uh, he made it to the final interview stage. Uh -huh. and he wasn't expecting the types of questions that were being asked to him. And uh -huh. when these candidates, especially second language learners, right? We're, uh -huh. we're helping Korean professionals with their English. Okay. When asked a question that they have not yet prepped for was mm -hmm. left field now what happens to their psyche and really their mind is complete blank like okay. a complete blank. and i don't know if you've ever yeah. experienced that i i have i've seen that a little bit too especially like in like international hiring events or like even this past korea event that i had worked on like there are situations where i've seen candidates that um had to ask to repeat the question multiple times or like, mm -hmm. um, so like just in like an interview setting in itself, like what we did this time is like, we, we talked with candidates, like us recruiters here at Amazon. We talked with the candidates over the phone to make sure like they had those like, like speaking skills. Um, and then only at that point did they, were they able to make it on site. But at the same time, um, when it comes to like the onsite interview itself, what you'll find is like oftentimes, especially being a company this big, um, it's not uncommon for employees or even interviewers to be like English second language as well. Mm -hmm. So if someone like grew up in like a Spanish speaking country and then they, they're just like an amazing like software engineer and they're a good interviewer, but then they go to Korea and like Koreans are second language as well. There's kind of like a, that's, that's a little bit of a difficult element there. Um, so like situations in the past, like, We've had like interviewers try to write down like a question on the whiteboard and then try to kind of have candidates that understand it that way. Um, and then like, even then that might be a struggle, but when they finally get, understand what the question is being asked, then there's a struggle of like, how do I communicate um, back about what like my answer is to that question. In that same sense, like if you can, if you only prepare like specific examples to specific questions, a lot of times like interviewers can pick up that, hey, like questions aren't like, they're not answering very naturally or like organically. Um, and like sometimes it's like, if, a, if an interviewer asks you, can you give me an example of a time when you um, had a deadline that you couldn't meet? And then like, you only prepared a specific example fluently for like a different question and they try to stretch that. 
it doesn't directly answer the question. And then the interviewers kind of assume, hey, like this person might not have had those same experiences that this job demands. So uh, I would say those are kind of like the takeaways from what I've seen past interviews. I'm completely on board with that, but it's so unfortunate because it's not like they didn't have that experience. Oh yeah. Had that experience. It's just we had good engineers, like on the engineering side, like they, like technically they were great. Um, they can like write code very well, but then when it comes to like the work workplace, like you're interacting with not only like English native speakers, but then also like like I said, like people who maybe grew up in like like Spain or um, any other second lang- English second language country, and like if you can't communicate or collaborate with like people you're working with, like it's hard to like, get anything accomplished or deliver on your deliverables. Mm. So, yeah. That's a very important takeaway, I think, because yes, as we've discussed, prepping for job interviews is a skill and that's something you must practice uh-huh. either yourself or with a coach, a professional, right? Mm-hmm. But when you do get that job and you're onboarded and then you have to collaborate and communicate with your colleagues and you mm-hmm. know, your manager, like you said, collaboration is key for a company like Amazon. And if you're a technical mm-hmm. A candidate like an engineer, you can't mm-hmm. get anything accomplished without collaboration, and that language that's spoken is English. Yeah, so it is. What needs to, the, the mindset? I think needs to change. It's not just hey Don, or they come to us and say help me get this job. It's we can help you for sure, mm-hmm. but also realize that when you do get that job, there's going to be a lot of English spoken, whether it's oral or written, and mm-hmm. you must be prepped. Right, you must be prepped for that. Yeah, yeah. definitely. For sure. Uh, yeah, I get. And going back to that, like interviewing itself is is, in a, is a skill. I would say, and like definitely, like if you have the opportunity to practice, like that helps so much. Especially like even like an interview setting when you're at, being asked, can you give me an example of a time when um, like you had to make a decision with and you're, you ha- you had to make a decision with the absence of data, um, and like you're just thinking about it, and then if you if you're just kind of like blank and you don't have an example, then like it just becomes awkward. Um, if you're, if you have an example, but you can't communicate clearly and you're spending a lot of time just like saying words but, or like, like speaking words without saying anything. You know what I mean? So go ahead. So as the interviewer, when you see that happen, right? When you see somebody uh-huh. mumble and not give you a clear, direct answer, mm-hmm. what in your mind uh, in terms of decision making for giving that person the job as opposed to not? So it depends. Um, like, depends on like what, like what they were like rambling about, or maybe if their like example was weak, like we'd ask follow up questions, make sure like they have like ample opportunity to kind of convey like different examples that they may have had that maybe weren't addressed with a specific question or like, <laughs> gosh, like, yeah, like we'd ask follow questions, we'd reward the question, maybe we'd ask a different question to kind of get that same data point in terms of has this person been in the situation or how they dealt with this kind of complexity. But at the same time, like if they're just unable to answer the question or like, again, like going back to like, they just spent all this time like, um, like speaking all these words and like not delivering any message with it, then we would come, we would be forced to come to this conclusion that hey, like, um, maybe this candidate doesn't have um, either like experience in that in that in that type of setting uh, we're trying to cover with that question, or like um, it just comes down to communication. Like, hey, like, you know, like I'm sure this guy's great, like technically, or like maybe they're functionally they have the skill set, but like when it comes to working at Amazon, they can't speak English or they can't communicate clearly. Then. Um, they won't be like a, be able to be like a functioning, like contributing member of the team. Right, so, it's just not gonna work. Yeah. I guess a good segue into my other question that I've, that I've wanted to ask you, which is what is the, I guess, biggest issue when you see interviewing these non-English native speakers? Biggest issue? Mm, gosh. So I think, I think we kind of briefly touched on it. Like, the biggest issues I would say are like not being able to understand the question that's being asked. Like, okay. like, I mean, if I ask you, Hey, can you give me an example of a time when um, 
you like you had a differing opinion from your team and like you aren't able to answer the question then like obviously like you're not gonna be able to like, like provide examples that um, demonstrate what they're looking for but then also like um understanding the questions like a difficulty sometimes and then get, getting an answer back to like the interviewer that could also be a difficulty like being able to like communicate clearly effectively and again like not ramble um and like the, i think like, we talked about briefly too like not coming off too scripted because if it's too scripted like we obviously want our candidates to prepare like we really want our like in it, like we want people who like take it seriously and like anytime people are like seem like they're really excited about this opportunity like we're excited for them because end of the day we want to hire people too but mm -hmm. it's more a matter of like um if it's too scripted then like either they just practice only for that and like nothing comes out organically or like um i mean we, we want to assume people lie but like like it's just kind of like that connotation where hey like um like i guess like the, the where i'm going with that whole like like third example of like kind of not coming off organically is that a lot of times what we also do is we ask like follow-up questions so if you only practice telling one story in one specific way and then we ask hey so like what was the follow-up or like what did you learn from it um if you're not able to like talk to it clearly as you did like before it's like hey like how much of this is did something they actually learned or like they, they grew from versus like it's just like a story they prepared for an interview setting so so when you see that, when you see that, look, oh, well, that first question that I asked came out nice, but I've got uh -huh. a few more come off scripted. But when I asked a second follow-up question, he didn't give me uh -huh. that direct answer. So what are you, what, what is going in your mind when you find out that this guy came off scripted? Um, what is your conclusion? Um, I mean, like me, I, I like to be a nice guy. I like to say, hey, like this person definitely take the interview seriously and practiced. Um, secondly, like if there's a, like a drastic disparity between like what like the initial story that they told, um, like oftentimes the story, if it's too scripted, like they may not even be relevant, like I said, to like the previous question that was asked, but like if they're too scripted and then the, like the follow-up questions, the answers are kind of, um, like if there's a big discrepancy, I'm assuming, hey, like, this person is probably going to struggle in terms of like communication and like, especially in a work setting where they ask they they might be dealing with like a formal thing. And then they have to like solve the problem together with the same people they were initially talking. About. So it really depends. It really depends on the candidate and the individual, but I would say like, like having like a very organic fluid kind of conversation on um, being able to like collaborate with your interviewers, especially if you're at, like being working on technical questions, um, those are all kind of important factors that I would say keep, keep in mind. So I guess authenticity is so big, right? And, and if you're not able to bring out that authentic, authenticity, like that authentic nature about yourself, uh -huh. uh, it's going to be a problem. Bottom line, it will be a problem, right? Uh-huh. Like, yeah, because like, I mean, the other, like, because honestly, like when we're inter conducting interviews, like, excuse me, when we're conducting interviews, um, we, we're really making a hiring decision based on like what we, the data points that we've collected from that interview itself. Like maybe like we can check like, um, I don't know, like the resume and see like where they work and kind of, or like how long they've been there or whatnot. But at the end of the day, like the hiring decision is based on the, on the interviews and like, if there's any reason, like if there are any flags that we get, like maybe someone's too hung up on like um, like certain aspect of a job, or maybe they're like like they have flags in terms of, like it really goes back to leadership principles too. Like if there are flags in terms of like earns trust or like um, like their examples for delivery results are kind of um, like again like scripted or like it doesn't really add up to like all this like, maybe the scale or scope of other ex examples they have. Then like, that's where we're like, we kind of put A and B together and say, Hey, like, I'm not so sure that this person has been like genuine in the response or like, I'm not sure if they're like stretching how much like something that they did 
was actually this impactful or something that they completely owned. So. Well, that's yeah. brilliant. I think that's very insightful. Um, then I, I, one of my last questions, I know you have to go, we're on a type timeline here, but then uh -huh. in your eyes as an interviewer for a company like Amazon, how uh -huh. important is it to practice your interview skills and maybe why is, why is having the right coach for that so important? It, are you able to give some insights there? A little bit. So um, again, like going back to like emphasizing that interviewing is a skill. Um, I would say like, it's very important in the sense that as you're able to, especially like let's say stories, like if we ask you, can, can you give me, a lot of our questions are formatted in, in the way of like, can you give me an example of a time when? Mm. Um, it really takes a lot of like skills in terms of like communicating clearly and effectively and efficiently what you're trying to say um, while also delivering like the message that's, that like the interviewer is looking for. So trying to, being able to do that effectively um, definitely takes practice. Um, even here in the U.S., like I tell candidates, hey, like if you have some time between now and an interview, try to practice telling stories out loud, even if you're talking at the wall. Um, and like that, that kind of gets that feel for, hey, like, like this is something I've actually accomplished. And like if you practice that, you're able to kind of whittle it down to like actually conveying that message so that there's enough time to ask follow-up questions. And then even with the follow-up questions, you can like talk, talk through it organically and like um, get maybe pointers from somebody who's listening to you say, hey, like slow down how fast you talk or um, like some of the stuff that you said there wasn't very relevant. Like that, that really helps in, in the sense that then, hey, like you're mentally prepared and like kind of exposed to what it's like to be in an interview setting. Because regardless of maybe you don't even want the job, like, like, it's it's kind of like, for lack of a better word, kind of intimidating to be interviewed by other people that are literally asking you, hey, like, what are you, like, what what makes you so great? And, like, most people, especially, at least for myself, I'm not the best, like, person to toot my own horn or say, hey, like, my name is David and I've done this, this, and that. Like, it's not, like, something that I regularly do anyway in itself. So if you have the opportunity to practice and, like, get get maybe coached or like pointers on how to convey your message even more efficiently or clearly. Um, I think that'll definitely be helpful. Um, yeah. 100%. And it plays into the culture here in Korea because not many, it's not in our culture to uh, give ourselves the praise or talk about how yeah. great it's. Yeah. And honestly, you're trying to put your best step forward, but like, Again, like going back to what you were saying about it's like it's not in our nature to kind of our our culture to like really just sell right. yourself. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Like nobody likes to brag and nobody likes to come off as arrogant. So, but as what you're saying, and I'm getting the key words from you: story, right? Your experience. Mm -hmm. How well can you articulate and communicate your experiences to the interviewer? Mm -hmm. By the end of the interview, they have all the data points they need to make that decision favorable to you, right? The interviewee. Mm -hmm. And so I think uh, one of the things that um, we do really well with our their students is let's craft up your story, right? Let's practice your mm -hmm. story and let's practice communicating about your experiences and, and what you've done and so that you're comfortable with me, with the uh -huh. coach, so that uh -huh. when you have that interview, it can come off naturally and authentic and not scripted, uh -huh. right? That's and good. In Korea, as you know, the culture, they, there's many times where they don't share their story. They don't mm -hmm. talk about themselves. And um, it's just not in their nature. So when they're going, when they're seeking these positions at Amazon and these global uh, global companies, mm -hmm. uh, they need to practice that storytelling ability, right? Definitely, definitely. Even like minor things and like just kind of just a couple pointers out there uh, even minor things like talking about what i accomplished versus what we accomplished like i understandably like not everything's gonna be accomplished just by you single-handedly but if you can like dis like distinguish what part where you were specifically the owner or like what you were like responsible for delivering versus like just what we did or like um our team 
Because then, like, it doesn't give us, like, context as to what your, like, contribution to that was. So like, if you can, like, talk about what I did and what I delivered and, like, what I accomplished, that'll give you, that'll give interviewers a lot more kind of, like, like, okay, this guy, like, has, like, for lack of a better word, like, clout about him. Like, he's, he's done things individually or she's done things individually versus, like, oh, the, the, this person just participated in a team that did this. So and that's one thing that I call out. You're right. right. And at the um, end of the day, it's, it's about confidence, right? You want to give the confidence to the interviewer. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if you're not doing that, well, it's going to be very difficult to, to get anything done, right? Whether sure. it's a new job or if it's collaborating with your team, you have to come off confident. And sure. And um, we want to help our, our students practice that confidence organically. And cool. um, we have just to live a, a plug, right? <laughs> You're fine. I think that's it. I, I've asked all the questions I wanted to ask. Um, okay. And um, just a, a plug would be, we've got an interview program that we are in, in, in the stage of, of promoting here. It's uh -huh. that and it's high in demand from our, our soon to be students. So we've got a head instructor, his name is Dan Rue, who uh, we yeah, know. Dan's great. Oh, Dan's great. Uh -huh. And his success rate in helping his students get into their dream jobs has mm -hmm. been highest amongst all of our coaches. That's awesome. Uh, it is. And, and you know what, you know what helps because Dan has gone through every process, every stage. Uh huh. And, and so he's able to share his experience um, from the onset of creating your resume to tailor fit the, the interviewer in that job, the cover letter, the LinkedIn profile. So your, your digital self all the way into helping them craft their story, getting them ready for stage one, stage two, the final stages of the interviews. Awesome. And the best thing is once we help you get that job, that dream job, uh -huh. it's, it's help you um sustain it and elevate yourself succeed in it uh -huh. exactly so it's cool. it's dan delivers a full package here and he's been helping a lot of our senior um senior students and um i want to share that with all of you that's watching this today is um if you do have that dream job if you have anything that you're seeking practice but practice with the right coach and the right program so that you're ready when that job comes for you right Better to prepare for it now than later. And one of the things that I know, Riley, right? Yeah, is my dog. Everyone gets luck in their life. Is that correct? I believe mm -hmm. everybody is lucky. The only thing that separates the two individuals with the luck that's coming to them is how much can you return on that luck, your ROI. Some mm -hmm. people five times, ten times on that luck when it comes. Mm -hmm. Some an individual can get zero, right? Because if they're not ready for it, if they're not ready to receive that luck, they'll do nothing with it. You know what I mean? So um, I believe the students that end up joining Dan and Dan's interview program, mm -hmm. uh, their luck will come to them. But to those that are prepared for it, they're able to get more from that luck when it comes. So have you heard the phrase like, luck is just what preparation means opportunity? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, that's hundred percent. So, yeah. David, thank you so much, man. I know you got to go back. Um, of course. To, yeah, yeah, my wife's actually waiting for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> we'll end it there, David. Thank you, and um, let's go Seahawks. Oh yeah, go Hawks! <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks, John. See ya. Bye.